Hey everybody, today we're talking about Poisson regression, which after logistical regression is the most common sort of generalized linear model that you'll encounter in the wild. It's used to model counts. For instance, the number of eggs laid by fish or the number of customers at a small business. Your explanatory variables can be quantitative or categorical, just like with linear regression, just like with logistical regression. Here's an example to kind of keep in mind. I'm imagining we have a bunch of new websites by, for instance, small businesses, and they're advertising different amounts. And we're keeping track of the number of site visits to those websites based on different advertising levels. So linear regression is going to be the wrong tool for the job in a situation like this. In this picture, I've just naively put on a regression line, a line of best fit, um, just to illustrate the problems with it. There are at least three of them, three that I'll highlight here. First and foremost, the shape of the graph isn't linear. So trying to put a line on top of this is not going to capture the true trend in the data. So just right off the bat, it's not desirable to put a regression line on this. Secondly, a regression line may predict negative counts for some x values. And we can see that here, where for smaller advertising levels, this regression line is predicting negative counts. So when we're doing linear regression, the response variable in theory can be anything. But of course, in this situation, counts can only be positive. So that's a problem here. Finally, um, and maybe a little bit more subtly, the variance tends to increase as the advertising level increases. So if you're not spending much on your website for your small business, you're getting very, very few hits, if any. But if you're spending a lot, there could be a lot of variability based on like other factors, sort of what kind of business you're running, etc. So as you go from left to right here, the variance tends to increase. And this is a really common situation with count data. The Poisson model is designed to fit data like this. And this is what it looks like in its most simple form. The random component says that uh, the response variable is going to have a Poisson distribution. So that's modeling counts where lambda here is representing the expected number of occurrences. I have a whole video on the Poisson distribution. I'll throw a link up top. If you, uh, if you haven't seen that before, it's worth checking out because the Poisson distribution is hugely important in statistical modeling because counts come up all the time. So um, the random component is going to be a Poisson distribution, but that mean is going to be determined by the explanatory variable. In particular, we are making a linear relationship for our explanatory variable and saying that the, um, the mean response is going to be, um, if we take the log of it, it'll have that linear relationship. So the log is actually making sense here because the mean is always going to be positive. The log is going to be potentially um, any real number. So that gets us uh, to a situation where it's OK that the right hand side has a full domain. There's theoretical reasons for that logarithm as well. That's the canonical link in the corresponding generalized linear model. That's a whole big lecture that we're not going to get into right now. I have a, a vid in mind for that. I'm just not there yet. So, of course, beta naught and beta 1 are unknown coefficients, just like in linear regression, just like in logistical regression. We have to, uh, to fit those using the data. Incidentally, because the logarithm here on the left-hand side of my systematic component is invertible, the systematic component here on the top can also be written by taking the exponential function of both sides, e to the beta naught plus beta 1x. So that's just another way of writing this model. The model is fit, as always, using maximum likelihood estimation, as always in, in this frequentist approach to statistics, that is. The math is ugly. I don't even think it has a closed form. I could be wrong about that, but it's always done using technology. In R, the code to obtain coefficients, beta naught and beta 1, or at least to obtain their estimators, is uh, this, GLM response variable, tilde explanatory variable, data equals, in this case, my data set is called advertising, comma, family equals, quote, Poisson. So this code is really familiar if you know how to do logistical regression in R, for instance. And uh, the resulting printout, just if I were to hit return after this, gives me um, coefficients of negative 2.12 
and 0.478 respectively. There's also some, some information about deviance. I'm not gonna go into R in this vid, I'll do that in an upcoming vid. Suffice it to say that if you want more information, you save this model as you know, a variable and then run a summary command on it, or there's different commands you can use using the broom package. All stuff I will cover to come. In this case, we get estimators for those coefficients, beta naught, negative 2.12, beta 1.478, as I saw in that last slide with this printout. So we can plug those into our model and get this, just literally plugging in those numbers. And uh, if we plot it, we get a really nice looking trend here that seems to capture the trend of the data really well. Up here at the top, when I've written the equation for that trend line, for that trend graph, I've uh, put it in that exponential form where I've taken the EXP of both sides. So for instance, we can plug in different X values and get predicted mean counts for, uh, for different advertising levels. So if X equals eight, I can plug that in if I have an advertising level of X equals eight. I get a, um, out of this, I get a lambda hat, an estimated um, mean number of visitors to the website of 5.6. Of course, individual counts are gonna vary based on that Poisson distribution from that random component. So in theory, if I were to take a slice at any different X value here, I should see a Poisson distribution with that parameter, lambda for that X value. The coefficients in a Poisson regression model are only slightly more difficult to interpret than the coefficients in a linear one, which is to say, <laughs> they're pretty simple. So if we take that lambda equals E to the beta naught plus beta one X, and use some rules of exponents to write that uh, E to the beta naught times e to the beta one to the x power, we can get some interpretations very directly. If we plug in x equals zero, that second exponential goes away, it's all just equal to one. And this tells us that the predicted mean count when x is zero is e to the beta naught. So while beta naught is not an intercept term exactly, it is uh, giving you information about an intercept. The predicted mean count is just the exponential of that coefficient. Similarly, looking at beta one, tells a, beta one is telling us that an increase of one unit in the explanatory variable is gonna increase the predicted mean count by a factor of e to the beta one. So in linear regression, it tells you how much you add each time. Here it's telling you the factor, and you just have to remember there's that exponential there as well. In the advertising example, for, um, for instance, the predicted mean count when x is zero is e to the negative 2.12, that's about 0.12, and an increase of one unit in x increases the predicted mean count by a factor of e to the 0.48 or 1.62. There are a number of important differences between Poisson regression and linear regression. So as I close this video, I just wanna point out a few important ones. First of all, there's no normal distribution in a Poisson regression model. At every x value, the distribution of the response variable is Poisson. You're modeling counts here, right? The whole point is to use that Poisson distribution here. Secondly, the variance of the response variable isn't constant in a Poisson regression model. In fact, it's larger for larger values of lambda. Technically, a Poisson distribution assumes that the variance and the mean are exactly the same. If that's not the case, then you think about uh, potentially having over dispersion or under dispersion, which uh, gets even deeper into the statistics here. Finally, I wanna mention that raw residuals, the difference between the observed and the expected Y values, aren't a good measure of model fit because you expect larger errors for larger lambdas. So in the example I did here for larger values of the explanatory variable. And so if all you do is compute raw residuals, a lot of what you're gonna end up with is just telling you sort of how big are the explanatory variables. More common and better practice is to use Deviance or Pearson, which is a sort of standardized residuals, and that'll give you some better results.